This is the worst version of Scratch, and it's also the oldest one. It was released 15 years ago in 2009, and just for reference, that's older than me. So in this video, I will be trying to make a game in this ancient and outdated Scratch version, and that's not all. At the end of this challenge, I will show my game to my dad, who is also pretty old, and see if Scratch from 15 years ago is appealing to him. I bet there won't be any problems, right? I started this challenge by looking around Scratch 1.4 and seeing how it differed from Scratch 3. And I was pretty impressed that most of the functionality of Scratch 3 was still there. And hey, there were even some features that Scratch 3 doesn't have. After my quick little tour, I started to progress on the game itself. I thought that the perfect little game would be a simple platformer with nothing too special. So with my idea in hand, I created the platforming scripts and some very simple art. The movement felt pretty smooth, but there were some issues with the player flickering when it hit a wall. And this issue was just happening because I'm using Scratch 1.4, so I decided to let it be. The next thing I did was add levels because all platformers need levels. I only made a few because at this point my creative juices were at an all time low. So instead of making levels, I decided to implement some new features. These new features weren't very unique. They were just spikes and the void. They both kill you and are scary. But there's one thing that is even scarier than those two things combined. That thing is this block right here. The slider sensor value block. When I first saw it, it looked harmless, and I was interested in it since it's a block that Scratch 3 doesn't have. So I clicked this box over here, and that ended up being the biggest mistake of this challenge. For some reason, this evil block crashes Scratch, and because it crashed Scratch, I had just lost all my progress. Everything went down the drain in an instant. I was obviously pretty upset and annoyed. This was a terrible, terrible event. But wait, maybe this wasn't actually a bad thing after all. The game I had made so far was pretty generic, and since I wanted to make a game that would impress my dad, maybe making a more original game would be better. Maybe this reset was a chance for me to make something better than just a platformer. Maybe this meant that I would create a very cool game. And if you watched the rest of the video, you will find out if I did or not. After some time, I came up with an idea for my new game. Here's how it goes. You are a guy who needs to protect a tree from slimes. The slimes move toward the tree, and if they reach it, you lose. The only way you protect your tree is by throwing a rock at the slimes. The problem is that you only have one rock, and you need to pick it up again after you've launched it. I hope that made sense, and if it didn't, you'll get what I mean soon enough. I started working on this new game by making the art for the player. It's cool, and it has a walking animation. The next thing I did was coding in the player movement scripts. Now we can move. Yay. Now I needed to create the tree that the player needed to protect. This tree turned out pretty nice and the art was pretty cute. Moving on, I coded in the slimes. They don't do anything lethal right now, but in the future, they will do some devious, devious things. But before that happens, I wanted to let the player fight back. So I coded in a rock. Now the rock can be launched and life is good. Now it's time to add the devious stuff. I coded in a system that allows multiple slimes to spawn and made them stop the game when they hit a tree. Oh yeah. I also added this wave thingy that makes the slimes move up and down. I actually think that this was one of the best things that I added to this game. It makes the game feel more alive and makes the slimes a tiny bit more unpredictable. Oh, I almost forgot. It also makes them more devious. At this point, I realized that I, myself, had done something pretty devious. I hadn't coded in any rewards for the player, so I made a scoring system that gives you 1 point for killing the devious slimes and 10 points for collecting a coin. The coins aren't that special, and they aren't really devious either, so yeah. And that's pretty much the entire game. I added in a few other things such as sound effects and particles, but not many other things happened. Now it's time to see what my dad has to say about the game I made in Scratch 1.4. I had a blast making this game, and despite some major setbacks, this was an enjoyable experience. But before I reveal what my dad has to say, let's see the game that I made. Okay, Dad, so what do you think? So I like how it's not one of those, you know, typical platformers, and it is pretty unique, but I think the graphics are a little bit lacking. Other than that, it's pretty cool. When I heard those words coming out of my dad's mouth, I felt a rush of relief. I do agree that the graphics weren't the best, 
But what mattered was that my dad thought my game was original and unique. If I had just made a generic platformer like I started doing at the beginning of this challenge, I wouldn't have impressed anyone. Before I close off this video, I just wanted to say that in the future, I will probably continue working on this game because I think it has a lot of potential and it could definitely go places in the future. So if you want to see that, make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss it when I upload a sequel.